Dear Sarah, I don't know if this letter will ever reach you. Lately, I've spent much of my time awake thinking of you. I miss you dearly, and I hope that all is well in Milwaukee. Your image, Sarah, more than anything else, has brought me peace. My thoughts of you have been like an unending telegraph wire stretched across the Atlantic. It has been your portrait which I take to bed with me every night. When I close my eyes, I study this picture until I'm asleep and dreaming of you. Each day I drift further away from reality until I'm barely even certain that my life existed before the war. And did I really live in Milwaukee and marry you, or did I actually invent the whole thing in my head? This uncertainty worries me greatly, as you might imagine, and so I've resolved to set aside a small amount of my time every day in which I'll do nothing but concentrate on my memories of you my family, and anything else I can recall from home. It reminds me of what it used to be like to be me. Have I mentioned to you that I've charged into no man's land? I know officers who say that a man experienced in this kind of combat makes a better soldier. I don't see it that way. There's no way to fully prepare for what we experience. Each time I've gone in, it seems there's a new element that I've not fully considered. Mud, barbed wire. Knowing what to expect, as well as fearing what new dangers I'll discover, makes me less willing to jump into battle than the first time I saw action. Earlier today, we received orders to charge into the Huns' trenches. The high command seemed to think we thinned out their ranks enough to make it across. towards the enemy, the noise and fire and explosions were too much. With each step, I felt like I was walking into a bullet and stepping on a landmine. Every second I went on felt like someone was torturing me. I was certain I wouldn't make it to the other trench. After running for what seemed like miles, I finally spotted the other end of the field sick with fear when I saw what was in front. Less than 100 yards ahead stood an armed German soldier. There was no way I'd reach him. He couldn't possibly miss me. But instead of dropping down, like I'd been trained, I kept going. I wanted him to see me. If he still felt like he had to shoot me, so be it. I preferred to die facing the man who killed me. I prefer this to being hit by a shell. 
Finally, I made it to the other side. I actually jumped into the trench with him. I stood right next to the German, waiting for him to turn and defend himself. When he made no move, I raised my gun and fired. I was standing right across from the German, and still I missed. Frustrated, I began shouting, What is the matter with you? Don't you care about what happens to you? Don't you know who I am? I raised my gun again, but before shooting, I heard a scream in the sky. Suddenly, everything around me burned. I felt time slow down. All I saw was fire. Soon I was being burned too. I felt my skin burn. I felt my limbs disintegrate. I dissolved until I was nothing but a ghost floating in the fire. I felt that burn too. Until there was nothing left. This is the first time in months that I've heard total silence. Looking around, it seems impossible that there's anything alive. Everything is black, burned, quiet. I may be the last living being on Earth. Maybe I'm writing this letter to someone who isn't there. Still, I have a feeling that, somehow, this letter will reach you, Sarah. I'm certain you will read what I have to say, what I have to admit. I no longer doubt your existence, and the fact that I know you will read this someday is keeping me alive. I'm going to stop writing now, Sarah. I must tell you that I love you, and that I will see you again. I think I hear voices somewhere. Perhaps there are people closer than I thought. With all of my love, John.